Hey, yeah, you. Think you don't need a personal brand? Sorry, but if you have a digital career, you absolutely need one. I'm not talking about becoming a so-called influencer like Kylie Jenner. No, a personal brand is way more practical than that. And with how the world is changing, you need it to succeed, both professionally and personally. Okay, are you a little more intrigued now? Good. We're going to run through the what and the why of a personal brand, how that applies to your tech career, and then I'll leave you with an eight-part framework that you can start implementing today. So stick around. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Rising Digital Leaders Show. I am your host, Matthew Doan. Today's organizations are powered by digital capabilities, cloud, data science, cybersecurity, and much more. To be competitive, we must have tech-savvy leaders steering the ships. But these people don't come out of thin air. We must develop them. This show is for the technical experts of the world, those brave souls that feel unheard and lost in the crowd, but know they were born to lead. We need you to rise, to become impactful digital leaders, In these episodes, we help you undergo a self-transformation, developing the mindset and skill set that'll massively enhance your abilities, influence, and career potential. We take a different approach, pulling in lessons from philosophy, psychology, neuroscience, and history to enrich the professional and personal aspects of your life. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the Rising Digital Leaders Show. Now, let's dig in. All right, let's dive right in. First thing is we need to answer this question. What is a personal brand? Full stop, a brand is a promise. A personal brand means it's your promise to a group of people in this world. Specifically, it's the unique combination of skills, experience, and personality that you want the world to see. You control the narrative, but you need to become well-known for keeping it. It always begins with your values, and there's no better value to start with than integrity. People know you deliver. You need to reinforce this over the life of your personal brand. Essentially, you're telling people, hey, if you interact with me, this is what you'll experience. That's a huge promise. I'll also note that there's a difference between a personal and a business brand. A business brand is something I think we're all pretty used to being behind. We've got an organization, uh, whether it's private sector or public sector, and there's a mission or some sort of strategy that we're working to accomplish. And we're kind of behind the scenes there supporting it all. Personal brand is when you come out from behind the curtain and you really emphasize who you are, what you're about, and you reinforce that for years and years and you update it over time. Now, it can be complementary with a business brand, but first and foremost, it's betting on yourself. And we'll dive into why that's really important here shortly. Okay, you get the gist. You might now be thinking, okay, do I actually need a personal brand? Good question. Know this, though. Practically speaking, the resume is dead. Your personal brand, which you bring to life with your online body of work, is now what gets you the opportunities You'll find countless examples of this on Twitter. I've seen it for years now, where someone is tweeting, posting content, sharing links to their blogs or videos, and it naturally pulls in companies to want to hire them. It's a living, breathing body of work, and that's all that the so-called applicant even needs to put out there. Most of the times, they're not even applying for a job, but their work is so attractive to employers that the employers find them and see that they're so capable that they must have them join their company. Once you get it up and running, it helps you get jobs faster and easier. Recruiters and hiring managers will seek you out, whether it's through Twitter or another platform that you use. The idea is that you want to get your body of work out there. Honestly, if you're within an organization too, it can help you get promoted more quickly. The more that you're recognized as being an expert in something, the faster that you can rise within your organization. Just remember this. The first thing people check when they're hearing about you for the first time is your reputation. 
essentially your personal brand online. They're going to Google you. They're going to look through Twitter, through LinkedIn. If you're on YouTube or TikTok or somewhere else, they're going to find out about you. You need to shape it in a way that's going to benefit you over the long term. Remember, your personal brand sells you 24-7, both actively and passively. You need to make it count. That's what today's episode is about. Okay, let's go another layer deeper. When we think about personal brand, motivational speaker and author Brian Tracy spelled out what he calls the laws of personal branding. Here's a few notables I'd like to share with you. First is the idea of specialization. You want to have something very targeted that you're doing, a specific form of work, a very niche community that you're working for, or an industry problem that you're solving. Another element is leadership. We want to know what you're knowledgeable in. Make that very clear for us. Thirdly, you need to inject personality. We can't be robotic. We can't be looking like everyone else out there. We want to have your unique flair, the way you speak, the way you write. Make sure that you're really doubling down on your strengths. And in that process, you can also bring forward your flaws, your vulnerabilities. We're all human, so the more personality you inject into what you're doing, the more we can relate to you on a human-to-human basis. We also want to make sure that you're distinctive. We want to express ourselves in a unique way. This could be how you dress. It can be a slogan that you're always repeating. It can be a very specific origin story that you tell for yourself. A couple more ideas. We need to be visible. We need to consistently show up and be reliable. We also need to be persistent. We can't just be catering to all the latest fads and trends in how we're portraying ourselves out to the world. We need to be steady. We need to make sure that we're adhering to our values, stating them and living by them and communicating in line with them over time. Okay, so you've got the theory now. I'd like to make it a little bit more real. I'll use Winston Churchill as a historical example. Most people don't know that he was in a decade-long political exile prior to ascending to the prime minister role in the 1940s. He was driven out of politics. While many people might have been down on themselves, he became really prolific. He turned to radio, writing articles, newspaper columns, several books. He was all over the place. He actually became more famous in America than England. Churchill, over the years in the 1930s, essentially becomes a whole media company unto himself. He becomes really well known for his warnings about Nazism and Hitler's rise. And when Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's appeasement strategy failed, Churchill emerged naturally as that top choice to succeed him. He had the world's ear to communicate his message. The rest is history. Okay, Churchill's a legend, but he didn't grow up in the era of digital business. So let me shine some light on folks in technology today. First up, let's look at Daliana Liu. She's most prominent on LinkedIn, and her career history is steeped in data science. She's currently at Amazon Web Services. But you'll see with more than 50,000 followers, she leads a more expansive conversation online regarding AI, careers, and emotional intelligence. It's that combination of things that really attract an audience for her. She's also converted over 7,000 of her followers over to a weekly newsletter that she owns and distributes. Next, I'll highlight John Marty. Again, he's mostly on LinkedIn. He's a former startup founder, a product manager at big tech companies. He also runs a YouTube channel around tech careers for non-engineers. Over the recent years, though, he's diversified himself into a podcast host and founding a nonprofit focused on helping 1 billion people maximize their sense of meaning in life. So you can see how he's expanded his influence over time as he's developed his personal brand. Those are two really powerful examples. As promised, I'll have an eight-part framework that I'll share with you here in a second, but I'd like to share some key principles on how to do this right. 
First, we need to overcome this nervousness around a personal brand. I think a lot of people feel that if you work for a company, therefore, you're not allowed to have a personal brand unless you're a top executive and it's formally authorized for you to have a personal brand. Kill that notion right now. Believe me, it's vital that you have one. It's also never too late or too early to start your personal brand. You need to play the long game. The volume of work, your body of work that you create over time is not something that we're just playing for in a moment in time. It's the little steps that add up, the little pages that you build day by day that add up to an entire volume, an entire encyclopedia of work that you're building for all of us to fall in love with, to understand, and to really see what you're made of. And also, let's focus when we're building our personal brand on what's in our control versus not. Remember that the work itself is always in your control. The process is in your control for what you bring to the world. But you can't control how people react. We have to get comfortable with that notion. All right, on to the eight steps for developing your personal brand. Number one, find role models and mentors. Don't try and do this alone. Pick people who are maybe just a few steps ahead of you. Support them. You'll want to build relationships with them. They don't even need to be living, though. Take Napoleon Hill, for example. He's the author of Think and Grow Rich. You can actually, by reading that book, see how his personal brand evolved, what it took for him to become the person that could actually write a book like that. And you can study people like this, tag them as your mentors, again, dead or alive, but have people that you can use to guide what you're doing with your personal brand. All right, number two, establish your personal brand vision. I like to talk a lot about quarter century thinking, looking 25 years ahead. How do you want people to look at you? What words do you want to come to their minds? Maybe it's groundbreaking, human-centered, high integrity, visionary, or empathetic. Where you're aiming your personal brand vision, though, has to be a blend of your interests, your skills, your goals, and how all of those intersect with market demands. Because obviously you want to monetize this. You want to make it something that you can build a living off of. But you have to think long term. Don't just look at the here and now. Play the long game. And in this process, you'll want to have a very good understanding of your backstory. Like any good superhero, everyone has an origin. The more that you can sharpen your origin story, take people from where you were to where you are, and then where you're going, that's going to be fuel for your personal brand, something you want to use over and over again. Third step in the process, then, is identifying your niche. Again, I say niche. Some people say niche. I love niche. Anyways, you've probably heard this before, that the riches are in the niches. If you're talking to everybody... That means you're talking to nobody. And if we try to talk to everybody, obviously it's a crowded space. We need to niche down and then do it again. We have to become very specific on who's in and who's out for the audience that you seek. Over time, you'll want to engage with these very specific people to understand their pains, their hopes, dreams, even start to record the lyrics they use in communicating these things because you're going to want to communicate those back to them so that they can resonate with you. For those in design and marketing, you might also look at something like persona mapping. This is the idea where you understand how your ideal audience thinks and feels. Imagine sitting with them during the course of a day or a week and start to record what's going through their head. This is all really valuable to identifying and becoming close with your niche. Number four is around solidifying your unique value proposition. You'll want to get very specific, doubling down on your strengths, documenting your unique beliefs and worldviews. I'll take myself as an example. I'm here to help unheard technology professionals develop into leaders and unlock a life of freedom. I'm aiming at a very specific audience there, working to tap into some of their pain points and their ambitions. You'll want to use your strengths and point those at specific needs in this world as well. Number five, create online assets. 
The whole idea is that you want to own your real estate, buy some land and start building on it. What this means in the digital world is create a hub. Ideally, you have your own website as that central place that anyone can find the rest of your work. From there, think about the content types that work best for you. Some people prefer the written medium like blogs or newsletters or articles, right? Others are more inclined for audio, like a podcast. Some people are great performers, great in front of a camera, so videos on YouTube or another medium might be best there. You can get further amplification by guesting, so you can bring your blogs, your articles, you can pitch those to other publications, other blog sites. You might even pitch yourself as a potential podcast guest. For me, written word and audio is where I'm most comfortable at this time. I believe that video is in my future, but I'm not trying to do too much. I'm still toying with video, but I'll ramp that up later. Your whole goal is to start building a body of work. If you think of your career as a 10 volume encyclopedia, you're slowly building it page by page. You're not trying to write a single volume all at once. That'll exhaust you and it'll prevent forward progress. You won't have any small wins that keep you energized. Last point is when it comes down to online assets is the importance of email. It was one of the first killer apps I know, and it's still as relevant as ever today. The whole idea is if you can capture other people's emails and contact information and have control of that, you then own distribution. You're not relying on a third party like a social media platform to keep access to your followers because you could lose those at any second. There's countless examples of people online whose accounts have been taken away, losing hundreds of thousands or even millions of followers. Years of work gone in an instant. We protect against that by converting the people that we engage with onto email. Number six then is around building a content marketing strategy. Content marketing is something far beyond what we used to experience. It used to be about pitching products and services and everyone was hiding behind the brand, right? But instead, what you're doing with content marketing is consistently providing focused and valuable content that speaks directly to helping your target audience solve some need. You give and give and give. It's not about selling stuff. We're freely providing value. That's the idea. Over time, in doing this enough and being very focused, you'll build a loyal tribe. And this eventually earns you the right to sell. You'll want a content marketing strategy in place for all of this. A couple role models that I'll point you to, you can look at uh, Justin Welsh, for LinkedIn. He's got these really great frameworks on how he brings content out to the world on an almost daily basis and shows how that then converts into his own personal brand and then how he can monetize that personal brand over time. If you want to look into the world of podcasts, uh, one of the greats out there is a woman named Amy Porterfield. She's great in the digital marketing space and online businesses, and she has this wonderful Uh, content calendar system for how you start to build themes for every month and every week and use that as your guide for getting content out into the world. And I'll give you a personal tip here. If you can batch the development of your content, that's gold. Take a couple of hours to build your weekly content or a half day to build your monthly content And don't let stress creep into your world on doing it just in time, day by day. That's crazy. It's anxiety ridden. Don't go there. Number seven is having a social media strategy. First off, I'll tell you, don't try to be on multiple platforms at once. It'll exhaust you and you won't get anywhere. Pick one platform that you're comfortable with. If you don't like being on video, YouTube or TikTok are out. Maybe get to that later, but focus on something you're comfortable, whether that's audio or the written word. Secondly, with your social media profiles, know that your profile is your sales landing page for your personal brand. You'll want to follow best practice guidance for whatever platform you choose and shape it in a way so that it sells itself. It's 
extremely clear in communicating to your target audience who you're serving and how. My personal recommendation for many reasons is actually to start on LinkedIn. If you look at some of the analysis out there on platforms, you'll see that LinkedIn still has a ton of organic reach. This means that you don't need to have hundreds of thousands of followers or be using paid advertising to acquire followers and attention. If you do content right and follow a lot of the best practices, you can reach a lot of people and build that audience that you're seeking. Also in your social media strategy, you'll want to leverage influencers, those with established audiences. Tag them, comment on their work, become really well known within their circles. Remember, the idea is that followers don't mean jack on their own. You need to funnel them, whittle down to the right set of people, and through the right content strategy that you push out through social media, amongst other ways, you'll develop super fans, super fans that stick with you over the long term. All right, last step, number eight, add value through community. This is the long game, as I've said several times over at this point. It's a long, slow build to get a personal brand established. It takes time to make sure that you're communicating to people that you're delivering something specific and that you make good on that promise. Over time, you're going to create a community, participate in existing ones, and certain people will begin to follow you and look forward to your content and rely on you for answers. There are no overnight successes. You've heard this many times. And in building a personal brand, this is extremely true. But the long-term value of a personal brand is something that you can't quantify. It's always working for you. It's an asset that is always bringing in new opportunities, creating new connections in this world. And that's what we need going forward. In the technology world, you have immense skill, immense opportunity, and you'll want to place bets in this world through a personal brand that expand your potential, both professionally and personally. All right, so those are the eight steps of the framework. Essentially, what you're trying to do is build yourself in a way that you can give to and help others, You'll then want to help people so much that people are magnetically pulled into your orbit. And in doing so, you're not asking for anything in return yet, but people along the way are willing to support you. They'll open doors for you. This whole idea of serendipity takes place where new opportunities, new connections and relationships will fall into your lap because of the network, the community you've created. The whole idea is to play the long game in building your personal brand, make sure that it's meaningful to you, and have systems in place that makes it manageable. So recapping today's episode, I know we've gone through a lot. We've covered the definition of a personal brand, why you need one. We've gone through some examples, both historical and more recent, of people who have cultivated personal brands. Uh, we looked at some principles for success and then dove into this eight-part framework for cultivating your personal brand. Thanks for hanging with me to the end. I hope this is helpful. Catch you next time. This is your host, Matthew Doan. Thank you for listening to the Rising Digital Leaders Show. Again, my mission is to help you elevate your career as a digital leader and live a thriving life. I hope this episode sparks new thinking and helps you take meaningful action in your world. If you enjoyed the experience, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and left a five-star review. That's it for now. Until next time, my friends, stay virtuous.